budget preparation process a full understanding of the budget planning and preparation system is essential, not just to derive expenditure projections but to be able to advise policymakers on the feasibility and desirability of specific budget proposals, from a macroeconomic or microeconomic perspective. It is much easier to control government expenditures at the, upstream, point of budget preparation than later during the execution of the budget. Thus, fiscal economists and general budget advisors need to know, what is the framework in which budget decisions are made, who is responsible for planning and preparing the budget, what are the basic steps, what are the typical weaknesses in procedures and how can these be overcome? And how can changes in budget plans be programmed and targeted? Answers to these questions are set out in the subsections below. Budget planning and preparation are, or should be, at the heart of good public expenditure management. To be fully effective, public expenditure management systems require four forms of fiscal and financial discipline. 1. Control of aggregate expenditure to ensure affordability, that is, consistency with the macroeconomic constraints. 2. Effective means for achieving a resource allocation that reflects expenditure policy priorities. 3. Efficient delivery of public services, productive efficiency, and 4. Minimization of the financial costs of budgetary management, i.e., efficient budget execution and cash and debt management practices. Budget preparation is the principal mechanism for achieving items 1 and 2. Item 3 typically features as an element of budget preparation only in industrial countries, while item 4 is essentially an issue in budget execution and cash management, see sections 4 and 5. Moreover, no system of budget execution or cash planning, the subjects of sections 4 and 5, can do more than mitigate the problems caused by poor quality or unrealistic budget preparation. What is the framework in which budget decisions are made? Budget preparation is a process with designated organizations and individuals having defined responsibilities that must be carried out within a given timetable, see figure 1 in section 1 for a typical timeline. This process is normally established and controlled by a legal and regulatory framework. While generally sharing broadly common procedures, budget preparation and execution systems do exhibit differences depending on their historic origin. Given the common heritage of many countries, it is possible to identify four main patterns Francophone, Latin American, British Commonwealth, and transition economies. To understand the budget preparation process in a given country, it is important to assess the basic soundness by judging the budget preparation system against certain internationally accepted standards or budget principles, know where to find the rules governing the budget preparation process, and from those rules, identify who has the responsibility for what elements of the budget preparation process. Recognizing the usefulness of budget principles based on the objective macroeconomic assessment of available revenues and financing, ideally, the expenditure budget should aim to be comprehensive, transparent, realistic, policy-oriented, and allow for clear accountability in budget execution. These concepts form a standard by which the soundness of budget systems can be judged, see Box 1. Box 1. Assessing the soundness of the budget The soundness of budget systems can be judged by the following, comprehensiveness is the coverage of government operations complete or estimates gross or does netting take place. Transparency how useful is the budget classification? Are there separate economic and functional classifications that meet international standards? Is it easy to connect policies and expenditures through a program? Structure. Realism is the budget based on a realistic macroeconomic framework, or estimates based on reasonable revenue projections. How are these made, and by whom, are the financing provisions realistic? Is there a realistic costing of policies and programs and hence expenditures, e.g., assumptions about inflation, exchange rates, etc. How are future cost implications taken into account? Is there a clear separation between present and new policies? How far are spending priorities determined and agreed under the budget process? In most Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD countries, comprehensiveness and transparency are achieved by designing a budget system with three key characteristics. Annuality. A budget is prepared every year, covering only one year, voted every year, and executed over one year. While maintaining the core concept of annual authorization, this principle has been modified at the preparation stage, such that most OECD countries now develop the annual budget within a multi-year perspective, through the preparation of medium-term revenue and expenditure frameworks. A very few are moving toward determining budget appropriations for more than one year at a time. Unity. Revenue and expenditure, as well as borrowing constraints, should be considered together to determine annual budget targets. The budget should cover all government agencies and other institutions undertaking government operations so that the budget presents a consolidated picture of these operations and is voted on, as a whole, in the parliament. Universality. All resources should be directed to a common pool or fund, to be allocated and used for expenditures according to the current priorities of the government. In general, 
earmarking of resources for specific purposes is thus to be discouraged, but the case of extrabudgetary funds is considered in more detail below. These three characteristics are essential to ensure that, in budget preparation, all policy proposals for undertaking government expenditure will be forced to compete for resources, and that priorities will be established across the whole range of government operations. They are usually considered a prerequisite to meeting the first two of the four main goals of effective public expenditure management noted at the beginning of this section, exercising the macroeconomic constraint of affordability on the total, and ensuring efficiency in the allocation of resources. These characteristics are typically enshrined in a legal and administrative framework regulating the budget process. Knowing the rules although the precise legal framework for central government budgeting varies from country to country, it is usually set out at several levels. The constitution is the highest in the legal hierarchy. Although it deals only with broad principles, the constitution may clarify three important aspects. One, the relative powers of the executive and legislative branches with respect to public finances. Two, the definition of the financial relations between national and subnational levels of government. And three, the requirement, for example, in Commonwealth systems, that all public funds be paid into designated accounts. And that these funds be spent only under the authority of a law. The organic law is usually the main vehicle for establishing principles of public financial management. These laws may take the form of a single law that guides budget preparation, approval, execution, control, and auditing, loi organique relative au budget in the francophone system, lay de administration financiera in the Latin American system, or there may be several general laws covering specific areas of public finance management, e.g., under Commonwealth systems, that may also relate to subnational levels of government. They are called organic, because they relate to organizational matters and systems, and do not therefore require annual reenactment. Moreover, they can often be modified only under certain conditions, such as qualified parliamentary majority. Financial regulations. The organic budget law also gives to the government, or the minister responsible for public finance, the authority to issue detailed regulations and instructions, for instance Décret Portant Reglement de la Comptabilité Publique in the Francophone system, and Decreto para la Contabilidad Publica in the Latin American system. These are often quite detailed. The Constitution, the budget organic law, and financial regulations are permanent and form the legal framework within which the annual budget law, which includes the revenue and expenditure estimates for a given year, is prepared, approved, executed, and audited. The annual budget law can take different shapes depending on the system. In the Francophone and Latin American systems, the coverage of the annual budget law called budget or loi de finances in Francophone countries and lay annual de presupuestos in Latin America, is rather wide, since it contains the amount and details of revenue and expenditure, the balance, and also any new tax legislation. Measures and some changes to spending. Under the Commonwealth system, both revenue and expenditure estimates are presented. Often the latter are further divided into recurrent and development estimates, sometimes presented as separate volumes. Typically, the presentation is detailed by institution and line item. By contrast, the annual budget in many transition economies has often been rather summary in format. Prior to any recent reforms, budget estimates were presented by budgetary institution typically only the major supervisory institutions and not their subordinate units and broken down only by broad functions, more or less the sectors used in the previous central planning framework. Identifying the responsibilities within the budget system the powers assigned to the legislative and executive branches, and, within the executive branch, who does what, essentially define the responsibilities for preparing the budget, box 2. Box 2. The framework that regulates the budget, what do you need to know? The following summarizes some of the key questions on the overall budget preparation framework. What is the budget timetable? How are budgeting powers distributed between the executive and legislative branches? Legislative power to propose spending power of amendment 1 vote global vote on spending executive powers to limit spending below appropriations. How are budgeting powers distributed within the executive? Number of agencies involved. Who does what? Agenda for setting budget negotiations. How is this determined? Structure of negotiations who has veto power. How are activities funded? Revenue accounts borrowed resources extra budgetary mechanisms multiple funds contingency funds special funds any legislative limits on expenditure deficit borrowing carryover of spending authority to next year any earmarking special or hypothecated funds constitutional or legal commitments on specific public services education health for instance when considering expenditure changes at the budget preparation stage Countries vary in the extent to which the parliament can change the budget, once it is submitted for their consideration. Many countries, for example, allow for the composition of the expenditure or revenue plans to be changed but not the global total, 
In others, particularly in a number of transition economies, new expenditure proposals often poorly costed can be put forward, approved by the parliament, and thus enter into the budget. Although those preparing the budget can help improve parliamentary understanding through discussions, the budget must ultimately be negotiated by the executive with the legislature.15 who is responsible for the planning and preparation of the budget. The responsibility for preparing the budget usually lies with the Ministry of Finance with input from the line ministries and some smaller spending agencies. This exercise is normally controlled by a central budget department located in the Ministry of Finance, or sometimes in a separate budget ministry. The character of central budget departments differs widely between countries, however. Some are only responsible for preparing the current budget, excluding debt. In such cases, the capital budget may be prepared by a planning or development ministry, or even at a higher level in the prime minister's or president's office, while the debt service costs are assessed and paid by another entity. Some budget departments are in charge of preparing the entire budget, although not involved in implementation of the budget. Others have a say on expenditure commitments, and some are also in charge of monitoring budget execution. It is therefore important to know the precise responsibilities of the budget department. It is particularly useful to know if the budget department is responsible for supplying partial or complete data on budget preparation, expenditure commitments, and full budget execution data. In many developing countries, only partial data on budget preparation may be available in the budget department. It is important that all data on the current budget, the capital budget, and the debt service, including data on secondary and tertiary tiers of government, are consolidated to ensure that, in total, they are consistent with macro objectives. In some countries, research departments of the central bank may carry out this task. What are the basic steps in budget preparation systems? In principle, the basic steps in a standard budget preparation system comprise the following. 1. The first step in budget preparation should be the determination of a macroeconomic framework for the budget year, and ideally at least the next two years. The macroeconomic projections, prepared by a macroeconomic unit in the Ministry of Finance or elsewhere, should be agreed with the Minister of Finance. This allows the budget department within the Ministry of Finance to determine the global level of expenditure that can be afforded without adverse macroeconomic implications, given expected revenues and the level of deficit that can be safely financed. In a few countries, there are fiscal rules in place that may limit total spending or recurrent spending, e.g., the Golden Rule. 16.2. The second step should be the allocation of this global total among line ministries, leaving room for reserves, a separate planning and a contingency reserve as explained below, to be managed by the Ministry of Finance. 3. The next step should be for the budget department to prepare a budget circular to give instructions to line ministries, with the indicative aggregate spending ceiling for each ministry, on how to prepare their estimates in a way that will be consistent with macro objectives. This circular will include information on the economic assumptions to be adopted on wage levels, the exchange rate and price levels, and preferably differentiated price levels for different economic categories of goods and services. 4. Step 4 is the submission of bids by line ministries to the budget department. Once received there needs to be an effective, challenge, capacity within the budget department to test the costing of existing and any new policy proposals. 5. The next step comprises the negotiations, usually at official and then bilateral or collective ministerial level, leading finally to agreement. 6. Finally, step 6 is cabinet endorsement of the proposals for inclusion in the budget that will go to parliament. While the principles should be broadly familiar in most ministries of finance and would even be considered out of date in those industrial countries with the most advanced budgeting systems, actual practices may fall a long way short. For example, in too many countries the budget department does not prepare a macro framework, nor even a first outline of the budget, let alone indicative ceilings by line ministry, before sending out the budget circular. In such cases, the circular is an administrative mechanism that initiates the budget-making process, usually providing a timetable for budget submissions that is, estimates of financial requirements by line item and by line ministry or spending agency but not giving them much guidance in the preparation of their estimates or overall spending limits. Thus, when preparing their budget requests, the ministries often merely add percentages, guided by an inflation projection in the circular, to their previous year's budget. With this, bottom-up approach, line ministries are able to overstate their needs, exerting upward pressure on overall spending. Early in the preparation stage, that is before the budget circular is issued, those advising on the preparation of the budget should ask, is the budget based on an aggregate level of general or central government? expenditure, in cash terms, that is consistent with the macro framework, and any fiscal rules in place, does the budget circular to the line ministries provide adequate guidance on preparing budget estimates? Does it include a guideline or limit for each line ministry on this total spending, or their suitable reserves?
Ideally, within the aggregate total there should be a planning reserve, not allocated in guidelines given to each line ministry, so the Ministry of Finance can assign extra resources later during budget. Negotiations for the most urgent priorities, without breaching the macroeconomic constraint. Moreover, after all final line ministry allocations have been made, there should still be a contingency reserve within the aggregate that will be held and administered by the Ministry of Finance to meet genuine contingency spending during the budget year. What are the typical weaknesses of budget preparation systems? There are often weaknesses in budget preparation systems, their nature, scale, and significance need to be understood, both to assess the value of the data produced and where there are separate projections to be made by an IMF team or other external advisors to accommodate such weaknesses. Eight common problem areas can be identified. 1. The central government budget is not really unified. It is a dual budget system with separate recurrent and capital or development budgets that may be based on inconsistent macroeconomic assumptions, budget classifications, or accounting rules. Each budget may be compiled by a different ministry for example, the Ministry of Finance for Recurrent Expenditures and a Planning Ministry for Capital or Development Expenditures.17. 2. The macroeconomic constraint is not explicitly taken into account in the budget process, or the economic assumptions underlying the estimated costs of expenditure programs are weak or erroneous. 3. Projections for the outern of the previous and current year's budgets are not prepared, or the experience to date is not analyzed, so that budget preparation becomes a simple incremental exercise based on the previous year's, often erroneous, budget estimates. 4. Satisfactory procedures do not exist for review of expenditure policies and program prioritization. 5. There is no multi-year planning. 6. Extrabudgetary funds are used to divert spending to one or more, off-budget, accounts. 7. Quasi-fiscal expenditures, contingent liabilities, etc., are not taken into account. 8. Appropriations in aid are used inappropriately. In many cases, remedying the problems encountered in the above areas would require extensive reforms, so there may be limited scope to make an immediate impact. Even in the short term, however, those reviewing budget preparation can play an important role in sensitizing policymakers to certain weaknesses and so assist in reorienting the system. Table 1 provides a summary of certain weaknesses and some of their implications. The next subsection deals with the individual issues in more detail. Table 1. Potential weaknesses in budget preparation Ideal situation Common weakness resulting problems for those preparing budgets Unified budget with full coverage. Dual budget, separate development and recurrent budgets, many extrabudgetary funds. Difficulty in developing a consolidated budget. Blurring of capital and current expenditure concepts. With two different budgets it is more difficult to enforce expenditure limits or develop a fiscal adjustment program. Universality. All revenues go into one fund for financing central government activities. Earmarked funds, especially common for financing. Extrabudgetary funds. Rigidity in spending priorities leading to inefficient allocation of public resources. Again, this makes fiscal adjustment a more difficult task. Knowledge and analysis of previous years projected. Outern expenditures. Availability of volume indicators. Lack of data. Data not communicated to budget office, or data are not analyzed. Data in the budget office may be misleading. For example, actual expenditures are usually different from budgeted expenditures, and the actual number of persons employed may be very different from the original budget projection. Use of macroeconomic framework, separate price indices by category of expenditure, inadequate knowledge or incorporation of macroeconomic constraints, poor estimates of program costs, leads to a bottom-up approach where the budget is determined more by spending agency requests. This an inadequate program provision generally lead to overspending, multi-year planning, Focus on current year only, no anticipation of future circumstances, may have a negative impact on fiscal sustainability, short-sighted policies often cannot be maintained in the long term. Alternatively, a lack of planning means imminent problems or recurrent consequences of capital spending are not foreseen. Procedures for resource prioritization implemented early in budget preparation, no direction in priority, setting, or attempt to prioritize until too late in the budget preparation process. Procedures for prioritization are especially important for meeting deficit targets or spending targets. If priorities are not communicated in a top-down approach early in the budget preparation process, overspending relative to budget is a likely outcome budget classification according to implementing institution, administrative, purpose of expenditure. Functional and use of inconsistent nomenclature for example, mixing functional and economic or budget nomenclature is not consistent with the chart of an economic classification is most useful when designing a fiscal adjustment program. Sometimes the only classification available is administrative by budget institution so that reducing the budget requires cuts by institution, and the quality of the expenditure, economic, accounts nomenclature. 
fiscal adjustment suffers, nor is it possible to understand how expenditures are distributed among different items or for what purpose. What are the typical questions? Is the central government's budget really unified? While the budget document presented to the legislature may appear to be a unified one, in reality the current budget and the capital budget are often prepared following different procedures. In such cases, difficulties can be encountered in meeting macro objectives where the two budgets are prepared without full coordination, or on different economic assumptions. For example, in many developing countries the development budget or public investment plan program PIP may include a combination of capital and current programs. Such a system can also lead to an inefficient use of funds because, for example, the same item of expenditure may be included in the two budgets, or, more typically, investment projects may be included in the budget, without providing for the necessary corresponding current expenditure. The supposed superior status of items included in the development budget may also tend to squeeze out current expenditures within the affordable total. Information on planned capital expenditures may be partial, where donor-financed expenditure is significant and coordination with the donors is inadequate. It is important to check the extent to which the budget is unified in the above sense of ensuring the internal consistency of different components. Quite apart from checking whether the economic assumptions are common and consistent, see below, however, it is also essential to ascertain whether there has been policy agreement, e.g., on start dates for new policies, on levels of staffing for new development projects when completed, or whether the Ministry of Finance has ensured that the recurrent cost implications of capital spending in future years have been taken into account. If there is inconsistency, the coordination between the two budgets should be strengthened by whatever means available. A meeting with key donors may also be necessary. Is the macroeconomic constraint explicitly taken into account? Are the economic assumptions underlying the budget accurate and consistent? In some countries the budget is prepared with surprisingly little reference to the macroeconomic prognosis. Often, there is little macroeconomic analytical capacity in the government, or the budget department has no contact with those undertaking such analysis, e.g., a research department at the central bank. The absence of proper macroeconomic analysis is particularly common in countries that have a dual budget system, that is, separate development and recurrent budgets as described above. With inadequate macroeconomic analysis, there can be insufficient discipline to limit the size of the sustainable budget deficit at the beginning of the budget process. As a consequence, the budget preparation procedure can be principally driven by the requests from the ministries for increased spending, i.e., the bottom-up approach. Without a firm top-down limit, the Ministry of Finance can only challenge proposals on technical or policy grounds, rather than in terms of affordability constraints and priorities within a fixed total. There will be a higher probability that the deficit obtained through this procedure will not be sustainable. Fiscal adjustment will be easier if the macroeconomic constraint and the acceptable deficit is defined first, i.e., a top-down approach. From this, spending departments can be given some guidelines to limit their requests. However, even if a macro constraint on aggregate expenditure is set, the fiscal economist needs to probe their validity. Since many countries have proven to be perennially optimistic in revenue forecasting, realistic revenue projections and the Financeable fiscal deficit must be decided before the budget preparation procedure begins, not at some late stage just before or, worst of all, after, its completion. In the worst examples, the revenue forecast can become a residual derived from line. Ministries aggregated spending plans less external financing and, acceptable, domestic borrowing. Those preparing the budget need to ensure that the budget preparation timetable is sufficiently long, and the process transparent and comprehensive so that there is no need for arbitrary expenditure cuts late in the process, when revenue or borrowing constraints become clear. Another source of weakness is that the economic assumptions to be used in estimating the cost of present and new policies may not be accurate, consistent across line ministries, are sufficiently discriminatory between different economic categories of expenditure. For example, a sharp fall in the exchange rate will have a much different impact on the cost of health programs because of the import of medicines than on the costs of servicing domestic debt. Poor unit cost estimates are one of the most common weaknesses in budget preparation. Fiscal economists need to urge the budget department to specify by category different price factors before budget estimates are prepared. The higher and more volatile the inflation rate, the greater the need to differentiate by category of expenditure. For recent budget execution figures known and analyzed, the budget department and others involved in budget preparation, such as the planning ministry are often unaware of the provisional outern for the last completed financial year, or the projected outern for the current financial year, because the budget is executed by a separate treasury department, rather than by the budget department. Budget preparation for year T plus 1 begins early in the current fiscal year T before the provisional outern for the previous year T1 is known, 
and usually before any projected outern for the current year has been made available, with the consequence that the Budget Department Planning Ministry prepares the budget by reference to the previous and current year's initial budgets, and not to the provisional or projected budget outern for the current and preceding years. If there is economic instability for example, in times of high inflation the budget preparation exercise can become seriously unrealistic. Uncertainty about likely price levels can also excuse, and thereby perpetuate a lax attitude to budget preparation, when the budget is subsequently executed, the results may include wasted administrative efforts spent switching resources from one budget line to another, environment, excessive use of supplementary appropriations, loss of macroeconomic control over the total, poor allocation of resources among programs, and expenditure arrears. At the preparation stage of the budget, when discussing the budget figures, in addition to the budget department and any planning ministry, the treasury or budget execution department should be fully involved. In particular, the treasury department should provide estimates of spending in the previous year and the spending to date in the current year, both in general and on specific programs or economic categories, as well as its forecast of the likely outern for the current year. The best basis for forecasting expenditure on a given policy is usually the estimated cost of that policy for the most recent year available. Do procedures exist for resource prioritization? An efficient budget preparation procedure should aim at making the government's priorities clear and at selecting, from the many budget requests by spending ministries, those which are really important to the government. In principle that requires two elements. First, a budget strategy needs to be determined at a political, typically